Welcome back, everyone. I was thinking this footage was going to be part of episode 7, so I'm missing the normal intro. So I'll give you a quick voiceover intro. The next several minutes we'll be finishing up a few welds, and then I'll touch on a final trim piece, and we have a couple guest visitors today. Coda. Come here. Not you, you big goat. Hi, Coda. Hi. Okay, so that piece I just welded in, it's, it's as much cosmetic as it is structural. Uh, if you recall, when I had to, when I notched out or cut out for this uh, piece of quarter round, um, that would have left a little tiny sliver of the original C channel. Um, it was easier just to cut the whole thing completely out. And I was going to leave it that way, but, and then the expanded metal would have came up and attached to this but by adding this piece of flat bar, it kind of matches. It gives that framework, framework uh, border look to the whole thing, makes it look a little nicer, and it actually adds a little bit of um, rigidity to that. So I'll reach in and um, do some welds on the underside, tying it down to the, those extra cross members, and then um, I'll grab the grinder and clean it up a little bit and um, probably bring it back and there's no point you need to watch that. It's pretty much the same thing you just saw so I'll get that done and then bring it back and we'll look at the um, finished product. Alrighty, so that is fully welded now, cleaned up with the grinder and the flat disc so um, you can kind of get a good profile look there of how that How that cove, I guess cope, for lack of a better term, turned out. And now then what that how that'll play out with the hinges. Is that uh, this is a little cardboard template of the profile of that as well as the pin in the center and those um, you can kind of see the two bar dark pencil lines those uh, depict the intersection if this wouldn't have been cut out um, so that will basically sit sit in here um, and create the ears for the hinge pin which puts the center of the pin right at that intersecting point Similarly to what I talked about before, instead of cutting these pieces out of a piece of plate and having to cut all four sides, the piece itself is right at an inch and three quarters um, wide. So I'm gonna make these out of three eighths thick. Um, so as they wear, they'll, there'll be plenty of meat there. So um, I'll just use a piece of inch and three quarter wide by three eighths hot rolled. Um, and that way I'll only have to put the radius on the end and then this this a uh, little bit uh, larger radius on this end for the piece that it welds into and then I will um, I'll drill the holes probably right to one inch but I want a little bit I want to have to fight putting the pin, a one inch a piece of cold roll round bars what I'm going to use for a hinge all the way across so that I don't have to fight um, fight lining that up because there'll be one, there's three hinges, pieces on each ramp, and then I think there's four or five matching ears on the trailer. Um, so, it's, so, so I don't have to fight that one inch fitting through all those posts that I'll clamp it up and run a boring bar through it and open those up maybe probably 
maybe 30 thousandths or so, 20 thousandths, just to give a little bit of uh, extra freedom and make it a little bit easier for assembly. So that's kind of the plan for here. Um, I won't do that until I probably have the ramps mostly made. So I'm getting to the point pretty close of having to lay out the rest of the materials as best I can, including the wood decking to get the suspension to compress the amount that would be normal when it's built. And that way I can determine um, the height from, with the trailer level with the ground, I'll be able to determine the height from here to the floor. And then basically the dovetail or the beaver tail will be half that distance. So, and then with that in turn will tell me how much to uh, cut the pie piece out to bend the beaver tail down. So uh, I guess before I do that, I'm gonna, again, I have to go to each side and finish welding the cross members on what would have been the underside and now is the top side. So I'll nail, finish nailing those cross members in. Um, and then I'm gonna start just laying, I'll, I'll lay all of the steel in its strategic location, even though the ramps aren't made up yet and I can't make the ramps because I don't know what this angle will be, but I know what material, within two or three percent what material is going to go into the ramp so I can get all that material cut up and I'll just lay it back here in those spots. You can also see um, here's the stake pockets. Those will get um, welded on to the sides so I can, they don't add up to a lot of weight but I'll just lay those where they belong. The tongue's done, the tongue box is on. Uh, I'll take you down and show you how that tongue box worked out when, since the last time you saw it, it was upside down. Um, so those brackets give me the ability. That tongue box just sets right in there nicely. And as I mentioned, the lid of the tongue box is just a little bit below the deck of the trailer. So if I needed to just extend something extra long in there, uh, the tongue jack is in. So it's just going to be a matter of laying out the rest of the materials, like I said, to get that weight figured out. And then the next major step will be to, to go ahead and cut the pie piece out of the last three feet and get this folded down to the height that I want. Um, some people might, might be kind of concerned that it will be extra low, which that's kind of a the goal of having a trailer that you might haul cars that have low ground clearance on, because as is, it's for the most part sitting, since I level it, it's very even with the floor. So right now I have right at 15 and three quarters of an inch. So it'll probably come down to maybe 15 inches when it's loaded. So then half that's so a seven and a half. So there'll be seven and a half inches of clearance. So that's still pretty low on a trailer and it certainly could drag when you're going in and out of a parking lot or something, but uh, there literally is nothing on there that you can hurt that certainly doesn't hurt the channel to drag on the ground. It sounds always sounds worse than it is. I might put a, I might put two half round pieces of pipe there just to make a nice uh, radius curve. So if there was a um, kind of a as a consumable or wear part, but uh, that's quite a ways down the road. So I think I'm going to end right here for this portion. I'll bring you back when. I've got all that welding done on the cross members because you really don't need to see that. And then I'll bring in, I'll probably bring in a piece of the expanded metal and lay it up there. Um, Cause I can cut that to, to size. So I'll probably get that done. And then like I mentioned, we'll figure out the final weight and move on from that. Okay, this morning I came out in the shop and I didn't film it because you really have already saw it. I finished welding in the tops, which was the bottom when the trailer was upside down. Finished it welding in all the tops of the cross member channels. So right now, everything that you see on the trailer has been 100% welded, excluding the stake pockets because they're not even tacked in place. So what I'm going to work on, uh, the next couple of steps I'm going to work on is tacking the uh, stake pockets where they belong. And then I'm also going to work on the hinge ears for the back of the trailer. The ramps themselves have uh, three ears each, two on the outside, one in the uh, directly in the middle. And then there's uh, 
four hinges for each ramp on the trailer. That allows the uh, most support and still lets the ramp slide all the way to the outside or slide into where they'll touch in the middle. Both the ramps will touch in the middle. So the ears, uh, I think I talked about a little bit, the ears I'm going to use are, um, are 3 8 inch thick both on the, on the trailer and on the, the uh, ramps themselves. This is where if I had a CNC plasma cutter or a water jet, this would be really, really handy because I've got to cut out um, a total of let's see, five, six, seven, 13 of these ears. Um, I could put a metal blade on the, the vertical band saw, but it's, it's three eighths inch thick, so it would still take a while, and the curves are pretty tight, so I don't think I could make that tight a curve with the bandsaw. So um, I just scribed or marked around the template with a silver paint pencil. So, and then kind of I'll use that paint pencil thickness as the uh, curve for to stay away from this edge. And then I'll just have to do, so I'll stack them together. And, and, and when I drill them and everything else, I'll stack them together as one whole gang of pieces. And that way, when I grind them down and drill them, they'll all be identical. So I'm gonna work on getting those uh, cut out right now. I'm gonna use the torch probably. Um, and I might try it with the plasma, we'll see. Uh, but at any rate, I'll get those cut out and then we'll come back and I'll, I'll show you how I'll kind of stack them together. And we might today we might have time to get to drilling them out and then running the boron bar through them to give it a little bit of clearance. So let's get going on that. Okay, so I did uh, I did those with the torch. I started one with the plasma cutter. You didn't see, but the end of the plasma cutter torch is kind of it's quite a bit larger than the tip of the oxyacetylene torch, so it's really hard to see the line. If you have a straight edge, it works great. Or if I had a template, I could have made a template, I guess, that I could have used to follow. But it's easier just to freehand it. So the torch actually, because the tip is so much narrower, gives me much much better visibility. So I went ahead and cut them out with the torch. So I'm going to go over to the, um, get them cooled off, go over to the belt grinder, clean up the faces on them so I can clamp them together as a stack. And then I'll come back and show you that. And then uh, we'll get them kind of ground down to shape. Okay, so I got those uh, seven pieces cut out. That's the pieces needed for the trailer itself. I'll worry about the ones for the ramps um, after I get the ramps made. So the way, the way typically I've done it, since I don't have a plasma, CNC plasma or CNC water jet, if I've got to make multiples of the same part is to do, like I mentioned, uh, was to cut them out by whatever means needed and then stack them together as a package, clamp them really tight, on the, make sure the flat surfaces are, are ground smooth clamp them together tight, tack weld them at the joints just to, on two lines, and then that lets you take them over to the, um, to the grinder, whatever grinding method you're gonna use, and do them as one batch. So I basically just have all six of these, or five of these. Um, there's two ones that are long. These here, these will actually overlap um, the trailer. These, so that's why they're longer, these just butt in. So, um, so they're clamped together now, so that'll let me grind uh, smooth most of the, the curvature, both sides of the curve or the radius. Um, and then once that's done, then I can come back and put tacks in those on the other axis, the axis I just ground and then come back and regrind the flat surfaces where the weld is currently at. So I think I'll take you over the belt grinder and show you a little bit of that. Not that you probably haven't seen a belt grinder. Or, I mean, it'd be the kind of equivalent of a belt sander, but it's a little bit heavier duty and put real coarse belts on it so it actually does grinding operations versus sanding. And I guess maybe it runs in the family. This is something when, when my dad was still alive, this is something he built probably 
40 years ago at least. Um, so I inherited it and it does a pretty good job. He built it again, built from scratch, um, machined out the rollers, uh, the drive rollers, rubber coated on this end. This one's solid aluminum. Um, not that fancy, but um, the platen on it is probably 12 inches long. So if you need to do some kind of rough surfacing, it doesn't have to be precise. You can use that. And then the radius end is what I use for, for the grinder. Let me go grab my um, safety glasses and hearing protection. I'll come right back. Alrighty. I'll go back over and do some more fine fine tuning of it based on the template, but I mean you can get from the uh, real rough torch marks down to a fairly smooth finish. So I'll finish refining that shape and then bring you back and show you the, the final result. Okay, so I finished uh, dressing that up on the belt grinder. So what you end up with is a, a block of all, whatever there was, five of the hinge bosses or hinge ears. And if we lay the template up on there, and I'll hold, hold it up with the camera and the template at one time. So basically it matches that template exactly. So, which in turn means that it will fit down here. There is a top and the bottom because the arc is not. So this is the top. So that in turn means that they will come down and they will fit in this. That channel. I mean, it doesn't look like it lines up now because of the weld beads that are in the way, still holding the stack together. But once the weld beads are out of there, it fits in that curvature nicely. So I'm going to leave the weld beads on the top and the bottom in there, and that way I can clamp it in the vise and drill um, all the holes exactly at the same time. That'll also verify that the holes are dead, uh, dead on center in relation to the base where it's welded on. I'll still use the hinge rod itself as an alignment tool when they're all on there. I'll put the rod through there and so that way it indeed it verifies that they're all on the same plane. That accounts for any bit of slight variation there might be in the trailer itself. So uh, I'm going to go get those uh, the hole drilled out and then I'm going to I'll bring it back to the drill press when I do the uh, do the final hole hole size fitting and have you take a look at that. Okay, I got those um, hinge ears all smoothed out, uh, clamped together, and I moved them over to my setup. I drilled them into a one inch hole, and now I need a little bit of clearance. Um, so I moved them over to the setup on how I'm gonna do that. And before I show you that, if there's some machinists out there watching, I'm sure you're gonna be cringing and going, oh, what are you doing? And I'd be one of those guys saying the same thing. If I was at work, I'd have this up on the bridge port and do it that way. But since I'm not at work and I don't have a, an email, I'm going to do it uh, the next best way. So I'm going to swing it around here. You can see my setup and it'll be what it'll be. So what I've got going on here is I've got a two inch boring head um, that has a Morse taper arbor on it. And that's in the drill press. And then I just built a I built a clamp there, a hold down bar. You can kind of see, I'll move you in here a little closer. I built a hold down bar so it holds it down tight. So nothing can really go anywhere. It's not unsafe, but obviously a drill press is nowhere near as rigid um, 
as a heavy mill would be. So there's a little bit of flex in the table. There's a little bit of flex in the in the quill. So it is what it is. But for this, where it's just a hinge, it doesn't really matter. It's I just need to take a probably ten or fifteen thousandths larger than one inch, um, and that just gives a little bit of play. So it makes it easier for the pin to be installed. So I've I just it's right at one inch now, or give or take. So I advanced the the boring head a, a few thousand. So I'm going to make a make a uh, cut through. Actually, I'll move you since I'm right-handed. All right, that should give you a little bit better view. Because it's not a super rigid setup, there is a little bit of chatter, but it is the way it is. And as far as boring by, I just got a silver soldered carbide or soldered in carbide tip uh, boring bar in there, half inch shank. Alright, so that's not too bad. As long as I take fairly light cuts, I've just got a one inch piece of the pin here, or a short piece of the uh, hinge pin, so I can check it for just wants to start, so I'll probably take another five or six thousandths if for no one's ever used a, a boring head like this before. They're pretty straightforward. They're actually, if you want to buy a really precision one, they can be expensive, but this one uh, it's not an expensive one. I knew I was going to be using it in a drill press, so it really doesn't pay to buy an expensive one. But it's um, this lower portion here you can see it's on a dove it's a dovetail to the upper portion um, and then there's locking screws there's multiple holes in the bottom so that you can pick a a, a minimum number of or amount of offset and then by ad advancing this screw here in the end you can move it a few thousandths at a time the dovetail shifts over or you can drop back or you can put the boring bar in the side if you want to bore a very large hole so they're very very uh, universal or flexible as far as this will go I think it's down to a 3 8 uh, about a 3 8 size hole and then anything larger larger than that I just advanced it a few thousands the advanced screw does is graduated with thousands on it, but given there's so much flex in this, if it was rigid, you could kind of dial in how much you wanted to take out, but given there's a lot of flex and given it's just a hinge, I'm just, I'm just kind of sneaking up on it. Pretty much there. I'm going to take uh, a couple spring passes just to clean off any burrs or high spots, and then um, I'll get it unclamped and I'll I'll show you what the final result was.
Okay, so I got the um, hinge ears taken out of the hillbilly mill. Got them cleaned up. Got the wells cleaned up on the bell grinder. All that's holding them together right now is just what penetration there was from the weld. So you can see, nice round hole. It's shapes looks just like that template looked, and it sets right down in that half round piece that we made. Let me grab some calipers and I'll measure what, see what the final hole turned out to be. Just about right where I want it to be. It came in at about one inch, 25, about 28 thousandths. So that's 20, 28 thousandths extra clearance on that pin. So that'll keep from buying, it'll help with binding, it'll help insert when I go to insert the pin. Uh, but there's still, that still leaves a better than a quarter inch of material on this outside edge. So it's not like it'll ever wear out. So I'm gonna get those broke apart. Uh, I've got the two other long ones. The ones that have the extended ears that go down here on the side, I've got to get those um, drilled and bored yet. So I'll probably do that off camera now that you've kind of seen how it goes. And then I will bring you back when I start welding them on. All right, welcome back to the shop, everyone. Um, a couple of little housekeeping items. Some of my videos have have ended fairly abruptly with not much of a sign out. Uh, partially that's because of, there might be a hour, hour and a half of video and by the time I edit it down to that half hour window or so, I don't necessarily know which, uh, which uh, block of video is gonna, gonna end up being that end of episode. So I'm gonna try to do a little bit better job in that regard. Um, I've edited most of episode eight, so I know that I'm right at, um, we're getting pretty close to a half an hour. So this should be, um, the end of episode eight. Um, so let me kind of explain where we're at. As you know from the footage just a few minutes ago, I finished up the ears off camera. I uh, finished the two outside ears that overlap. I've got one tacked into place and I'm gonna tack the other one into place, but I wanted to kind of share with you how I go about making sure they're in the correct position. So I'm gonna move you over here to this far side and kind of go over that so you can see the the ear is right here so what i did on the lathe is i just turned a, i took a piece of that one in a one inch cold roll it's going to be the hinge and i turned a a center point on it blackened it with a marker and then put just filed just the end to make it uh, shiny so it sticks out and i wrapped it with one layer of tape to account for that extra 20 thousandths or so. So it fits in that hole um, really snug. And so that basically gives me the exact center of the hole, that, that shiny dot. So then what I can do is I can take a straight edge. Uh, I might have to, so I'm gonna, hopefully it's still not too shaky here. I'm gonna switch the camera over to holding it by hand so I can get you in really close. So basically what I do is I take a straight edge, the angle should be about right on the face of it and you can just see that that shiny spot intersects with the straight edge and then I do the same thing at the top. You might not be able to see that because I can't get the actual lens um, low enough. Maybe if I rotated everything it would be upside down then but at any rate you have to take my word for it. Um, the I do the same thing on the top. I just hold a straight edge across the top of the frame and make sure that that shiny spot on the pin is intersecting that. That that then says the center of the pin. I mean, the other way you could look at it is by doing this with the square. That tells me that the center of the pin is right in this very corner of the square, which is where it needs to be because that's the 
intersection of these two planes if they were still continued. So anyway, that's how I went about setting the exact um, ear position on the two outside ears. And then as I mentioned, I will use the um, the cold rolled hinge pin, hinge pin itself to set the other the other hinges in the middle. So uh, I'm going to tack that in. This end here is already tacked on the inside. You can't see it. So I'm going to get that tacked. Um, and then I will put at least five remaining hinges uh, to put in the middle. So I'll get the rod laid up in there and get it leveled up. And um, I'll bring you back then and show you that. So stand by. Okay, so as you can see there, I just used the hinge pin itself as a an alignment tool and I've got the other remaining five years that you saw me make got those slid those down on there packed each one of those in on the top so that'll be support actually probably way more than what's needed but this way there's no chance to you know, never been the one inch pin uh, when the ramps are on there. And again, the ramps are uh, about 30 inches, so these are spaced to where the ramps will be able to slide in and touch the center here. And that'll bring the two ramps together minus the thickness of that here. And then they'll also be able to slide to the outside, so depending on the, what the width is that I need to load, it'll accommodate that. So I'm going to go ahead and um, get these all welded in, dressed up a little bit with the flap wheel, and then I will come back and we'll talk about the next steps, but that'll probably be pretty close to the end of the video, so stand by for that. Alrighty, so I've got those all welded in. I'll give you a close up here. And So based on uh, what I already had edited, we should be at somewhere around 40 minutes. So I think we'll wrap it up for this episode, which would be eight. Um, so just uh, kind of the reminder of to like, subscribe, comment, and ring the bell. That'll help me keep doing this content. And then when we come back for episode nine, I'm going to get all of the stake pockets welded in place. And I'm going to start laying out, cutting at least cutting the steel for the ramps and getting those laid out so like I mentioned before, I can, I can figure out the weight balance and determine if the axles are where I want them. That's the two things having the full weight will determine is what the balance point is and then also what my uh, loaded height will be so I can um, drop the beaver tail. And so that'll be a fun part when I cut that pie piece out. I'll have to heat both sides so that'll get a little tricky to try to heat both sides to get it to bend down evenly. So in, until then, uh, you guys have a good afternoon, and we'll see you in Episode 9.